Interesting views. Taking the other side of this point is licensed mortgage and real estate broker Fred Glick. Good to see you, gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Maria. So, Dan, most people would think raising mortgage rates at this state of the housing market would be really ridiculous. Why would higher rates actually be a good thing? Right. It's the counterintuitive take, right? So in any economic situation, you've got supply and demand to worry about. And they both, in this case, actually suggest that rising interest rates could help. On the supply side, we've got banks who, right now, most mortgages are funded by the government still. But those ones that are kind of on the bubble, they're, they're the questionable ones. And right now, banks are very worried about mortgages that aren't perfect because they're worried about putback risk, which we saw last week. Bank of America got a billion dollars of loans right. put back by Freddie Mac. So. In those cases, a little bit more yield, a little bit of a higher interest rate will encourage banks to take a little more risk. Now, on the borrower side, you're seeing people pretty much use these 4% rates. It's become the status quo. To kind of mm -hmm. get them moving, to kind of encourage them to now buy, they're going to have to get worried that these rates are going, that they're not going to be around forever, that they're going to have to start seeing rates rise. Right. Fred, what do you think about that? You're on the ground with buyers. You're sensing their sentiment. Would higher rates get them off the fence? They don't care. No. This is all about once you get a job, once you're comfortable with the job, then you say, I want to plant roots. I remember back years and years ago, rates were at 7, 9, 11. It didn't matter. The fact you had a job was all that matters and you could comfortably afford it. Now, remember, with going to the banks and the risk, you have to qualify for a mortgage now and it is harder. And if you loosen up the credit guidelines, maybe you get a few extra buyers in. So it just really depends well, on the market itself, but it's all about people being comfortable. And I don't, it doesn't matter if it's 2% or 7%. I mean, they really? can afford Anecdotally, the payment, they're comfortable, they can always refi too. Anecdotally speaking, I, the people I talk to anyway, I know quite a few people are kind of sitting on the sidelines because right now, unlike in normal housing markets, a lot of people are waiting to make sure that they're at the bottom, right? And until that happens and rates are low, they're kind of waiting around to find that deal. But if rates start rising, they might say, you know, I don't think home prices are going to go down that much more. I mean, it's how time. much better can it get at this point? Yeah. Well, really? I, yeah. I mean, there's, yeah. there's, there's no zero. It, yeah, but but, there, but how much urgency yeah. is there, right? If they think rates are going to be low for another year or two, they can wait for that bargain and don't have to worry. Mm -hmm. Dan, I've, I've talked to people over the years, and yes, there are the neurotic spreadsheet-doing engineers who they are waiting for the absolute bottom. And it's just not going to happen. They're not going to get perfect. I don't know what it is if they got the ego that they could go to a party and say, hey, I got things at the bottom. It doesn't matter. It's all about comfort. I've talked with somebody today in Orange County who's trying to buy a house. There's four offers on it, and they're but, but, cash deals. Right. But I mean, they're killing comfort, each other. It depends right? on like, the market. So what, yeah, well, are they, well, are they not comfortable of, right now? What, what are they uncomfortable with? Fred? Well, they're still comfortable with, they're uncomfortable with that possibility that home prices haven't bottomed. I have a lot of friends and family in South Florida who, you know, prices are quite low there compared to a few years ago, but they right. just don't want to buy a house and see another 5% go down. They just, what? they've seen their friends and relatives hurt too much they, by that already. What about you, Fred? And, and what Dan, are you I'll, from I'll your give customers? you that, but yeah, well, I, I just want to say, I'll, I'll, Dan, I'll give you that, and it depends on the individual market. If you're in Fort Myers, Florida, where the economy yeah, is based on basically tourism and there's tons of supply, yeah, it still could go down. But if you're in New York City, I mean, it's insane. Orange County, California, Philadelphia. I know I go through What's it with people insane? today. Yeah. It's insane well, that it's a seller's market in some particular areas. Hmm. Uh, so it's analogy. all about the area. I think a good analogy here could be the home buyer's credit that we saw a couple years ago. When it kind of got near expiration in April or May 2010, whatever it was, you saw this huge boom, right? People started entering the market because the situation was changing. Right. Again, you'd see as soon as rates start climbing 4.5%, 5%, people are going to say, uh oh, well, 6 maybe for a little coming. while because they'll, yeah, they'll feel yeah. like, oh, I don't want to miss it. Maybe, you know, maybe the cycle is about to turn. You, you just you, you wonder. Our gentlemen, thank you. We'll be watching that. We appreciate it.